Meet Evil Tom. Tom, of course, is an award-winning penetration tester, runs our team here at LMG. And I'm really pleased that he agreed to come in and show us how he actually hacks an organization. So we're gonna start off by, um, first we'll introduce our victim, who, who Tom is going to hack. We'll discuss different methods of entry, um, how he conducts network reconnaissance and figures out what exactly he's going to take advantage of. And then he moves laterally through the network, escalates privileges, steals your data and completely pones your network. Um, Tom, can you maybe explain to those who aren't familiar what pwn means? Pwned, it's a it's a it's a a slang term for owned. You know, if you it's like a certified pre-owned vehicles, right? Except it's uh, been been hacked by by your network attack. is pre-owned. <laughs> That's funny. Let's introduce our victim, Hack Me Inc. Poor Hack Me, we beat up on Hack Me Inc. a lot. Hack Me sells very important widgets. They're very very important. They're a mid-sized business, and they collect sensitive customer data as well. So they also have a lot of PII on their network. Why? Because apparently you need a lot of PII to make widgets? I don't know. It makes our case study a little more interesting. So, Tom, I know that you wrote your own custom malware. Is that right? You want to tell us a little bit about the malware, and then we will play the video of you actually hacking uh, Eric L. User. So, basically, we're sending a, in, a fake invoice uh, from Amazon.com. You know, so we just had Black or Cyber Monday. Uh, and so uh, we thought we, we could get, we could trick Eric User into clicking on our malicious email uh, and, and running a program. And that program will open up a back door to your network. And then, and then it actually pops up in a regular legitimate Amazon.com login screen. It, it, in this case, it wants you like to run it. So we're like, okay, run it. And then brings up a legitimate Amazon screen where you could have logged in with your legitimate credentials and seen that, oh, here's all my orders, but I don't see that order. And you still be confused, but uh, my, uh, I've already got the backdoor into your network. It was less than nine seconds, and now I've got a persistent backdoor into your corporate network. So what just happened here? That executable ran, and what did it do? So it, it ran, it, uh, it actually uh, it, it ran a couple of, of built-in Windows utilities. It ran like uh, some diagnostic things on the computer, and then it, it ran a secure shell connection. It actually opened up using uh, a built-in Windows tool to, it, it dropped a key and, and, and logged into a remote server that then opened up a, a, a reverse, a, a backdoor into the corporate network. Once you were in the network, you have a foothold on this user system. He's not an IT administrator. He had no access, right? Eric L. User? Yeah, he's a very low level user, but, and I'm not even gonna use his level of access. I'm just using his position on the network in order to go look around and see what I can find. Uh, but basically we, we first, uh, his computer uploads a little bit of information about his computer into our network. So this is uh, basically an output of IP config, uh, a built-in Windows utility, and it tells me the name of their local network, hackme.local. It gives me the IP address scheme of that network, so which is like how the computers are kind of laid out. It looks like it's a very simple, small network. And so just this one little piece of information, this one little output of a, a little simple tool built into Windows gives me as an attacker already kind of a roadmap of what I want to do uh, in or, or where I need to go to look on your network. So like right off just as an attacker, I'm super interested in like where you store your files. And then, uh, and I'm also in particular uh, around looking for web applications. You'll see I found seven, you know, host four, host eight and host 253. And it looks like a couple of the, all of them are hosting some kind of a file server and two of them are hosting uh, web applications. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go uh, as a, uh, really pull up a web browser and I'm, I'm going to first visit the websites that I see, right? So I'm going to put in the, the IP addresses uh, pivoting through that same proxy uh, and then bring up, uh, you know, web server no number one looks like it's a Windows Internet Information Services uh, web server. There might be uh, a web application there that I can explore and discover later. And then the second one I bring up, it's a printer. I found a printer on their network, which when I'm on a penetration test and I find a printer, I just jump for joy because I know uh, <laughs> often I can get uh, good information, if not passwords, directly out of the printer. It seems like when you get the printer, you get the keys to the kingdom. The smarter the printer often, the more likely it is that I'm going to uh, gain access to more of your network because of it. All right, let's see what else you're gonna do, Evil Tom. We have All the right. printer. 
So now that we we found the printer, I'm going to show you exactly kind of some of the steps that I take. I'm going to get into like the configuration files menu, and then I'm going to get into the address book. Uh, yeah, I'm shocked that there isn't like a password on this. Is this just default setting for a lot of printers? Default setting for a lot of printers, or even if if it isn't the default setting, a lot of times they don't change the default credentials. It's a Google search away. I, I don't know the default passwords on every printer, but you you type in Kanika Minolta BizHub 4020, it'll give you the default password if there is one. The printer's been joined to the domain, so it's actually got domain credentials, the credentials to the entire network, uh, because the, like I said, this is a smart printer. You can walk up to it and you can scan it right to your email, but in order for it to know your email address, it has to go look up in what's called a lightweight directory access protocol database what your email address is. And so what we what I'm doing here is I'm I'm uh, deciding I'm going to run my own LDAP uh, server and in it allows me to change the server address from hack me hack me.locals uh, LDAP server to my evil Tom uh, LDAP server and then I'm just going to capture that traffic where it tries to log in and there the, the printer is uh, literally going to send me the passwords uh to to the print to the to the network and so right now i'm setting up uh what's called tcp dump where i'm uh, a packet capture so the network traffic uh that uh, is going to be sent to my attacking infrastructure i'm going to capture it so i can look at it later when it goes to log into the ldap server it's just going to provide me the username and password it would normally have provided to the domain controller set you see it says got seven that means Seven packets, that's all it took. I just had to get seven packets out of that printer, and now I've got credentials uh, to your organization's network. Uh, and, and, and then I go back into the printer, and I'll go fix it. I'll go put it back the way, way it was. I'll set it back to hackme.local, to their global nice address book. And then I'm done with the printer. At that point, Like uh, I put it back. No, Nobody's the wiser. I messed with your printer for about, what, a minute. Uh, I put it back to the way it was. So I'll open up that packet capture in a tool called Wireshark. So I've downloaded that packet capture, open it in Wireshark, and I can go see what I've gotten uh, in those seven packets. Another thing that I like to do when I find a network and I can find file shares, I'm looking for I'm looking for backups because all the the special things that you are uh, that are valuable to your organization, you're going to want to back those up. And so uh, in this particular case, and I've seen this a lot, where the backups. Uh, might have uh, permission, you know, everybody in the organization or, or, or a lot of people in the organization have permission to read, uh, in this case, read and write from the backup file. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is basically I'm going to go look at like, okay, I'm going to I'm recursively look at all the files in that backup share. Like, what do I have access to? It's going to have yeah. financial data. It's going to have, uh, you know, in this case, uh, it's, we've got inventory and uh, profit and loss statements and account balances. And then it's got other server-based backups like the IIS server. It looks like we've got an app pool backup. I do have access to your network, but I don't have the top level access to your network. So that's what I'm looking for now is like, how can I pivot from a machine account in this particular case, your printer machine account to all the way to uh, domain administrators, what I want to get to. We have an administrator user ID and password. Now it doesn't have the domain hack me dot local so uh, because it doesn't have that in the username uh, this is probably a local administrative account to this particular uh, iis server so i'm going to say you know what i'm going to map a local uh, folder from my attacking host directly into this remote desktop situation so if there's any files when i'm on this file server that i find interesting it's drag and drop uh, in order to basically uh, data breach uh, all this information off your network uh, outside of your organization. And this isn't like I'm using fancy tools. I'm literally using uh, remote desktop protocol tools to, to copy data from your network to my, to my network. If I was a real bad guy, I'd be copying all the data, important data off your network and I'll be uh, exfiltrating it uh, into uh, into my uh, into my network, and then I'll, I'll hold you for ransom. I could at that point encrypt all your data because I've got a copy of it. And then if you don't pay, I can extort you uh, by saying, "Hang on, I'll release this data uh, to uh, to the the general internet if you don't pay up."
I think this really demonstrates the value of penetration testing itself as well, where we see so many organizations that either never have had one or haven't had one in a while. And while you may find uh, vulnerabilities, lack of patches with automated scans, there's a lot more to securing your organization beyond simply applying patches. Um, a lot of this is about what are the hackers going to take advantage of, and it may boil down to misconfigurations or exposed interfaces, things like that. Um, that again, may not be prioritized and really should be. So, all right, so the road we've traveled, we went from zero access. Thank you so much, Evil Tom. I know you do this every week on different engagements, so it's been fun to see. Um, and then you fished our victim, you searched for files and web servers on the internal network. Sounds like a very common playbook. You exploited a printer. I know how much you love printers, and thank you for making me enjoy them as well. Um, then you use stolen credentials, stolen printer credentials to kind of speed along through that network and explore. And finally, we saw that full network environment takeover. I have a feeling you made just in time cry. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Sherry Davidoff, CEO of LMG Security. If you have any questions, please reach out anytime. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at lmgsecurity.com or find us on LinkedIn and follow us on Twitter. Thanks so much for joining and we'll see you next time.